What's your name and where do you coach? So I'm Chris Payne. I'm the uh, assistant coach for men's soccer at the College of the Holy Cross, which is in Worcester, Massachusetts. And how does Future 500 compare to other ID camps that you've been to? Well, number one, it's just a lot of a lot of good players here that we can get to see in in a short space, space of time. Um, and what's great is the games are very short, so the you know players are not exhausted from game to game. Um, even though obviously the, this time of year the weather's really hot, but the guys get you know it's 50 minutes, they get a break, another 50. So. Um, real high intensity level through the day which really helps in terms of keeping an eye on where players are at and what they can do rather than seeing tired players all day long. And have you been successful in identifying prospective players at Future 500? Um, last year we had four or five guys that kind of stood out for us. Um, they, they were younger guys so we're still in the process of, of looking at those guys but I think the more we're able to get out here on, on an annual basis the more players will be able to, to get a good look at and communicate. Um, what's great is we get a lot of guys uh, this weekend, I've had about 15 to 20 players that have been in touch with us in the last two to three weeks letting us know that they're here so that makes life easier to get out here and, and take a look at players and players that we've been in touch with that have said they're going to be here that we've already seen it's a great environment to come and see them play again and how important would you say is film and recruiting and do you prefer highlights or full games yeah this is a great one so um you know, obviously it, it's so much easier for individual players to get their highlights and videos done we actually we we like to get the highlight video that's not too long just to give us a, an idea and a, and a taste of what guys can do um, and then to, uh, along with that, it's, it's always a great idea to, to throw in, maybe not full games, but you know, half a game, um, you know, three or four half games. Uh, if we like the highlight video, it's going to let us go, all right, now let's look at him in a bigger environment and, and a longer period. So both actually works um, without doing a highlight video that's five, six, seven minutes. Do a shorter one that really kind of grabs the attention. Um, and then we will we'll take a, a much better look even then at you know half a game where you've had a really good 45 minutes or whatever. And lastly, how important would you say is a player's social media presence? Uh, social media is important, especially in this day and age. It, it gives us an idea on where, where, where the players are mentally in their character, in terms of the culture that they want to bring. You know, uh, you know, what are they putting out on social media? Is it how they're doing in games, how their teammates are doing, uh, as opposed to what they're doing after prom or what they're doing before prom or what they're doing um, outside of football uh, and soccer? And um, you know, it's a, it gives us a good idea of where they may fit in culturally with, with the teams that we're trying to put together. So social media has become a very, very important part of the process. Um, and, and some kids, you know, they've, they've got to be careful, they've, they've got to realize that you know, everyone sees everything these days and um, if they put the wrong things out there in their social media it could be a very negative aspect for them so um, for us that's a big help to, to see where they are and you know, what kind of maturity level they're at as well by what they're posting on their social media.